Hello fellow cyborgs! Today I'm here to do a double book review of a couple southern American classics, American classics from the south, that take place in the early 1930s roughly, that are written in dialect form in short chapters from first person narration style. So if you know which ones I'm talking about, or you're very clever and you looked at the thumbnail or the title, because I don't think I made it Anyway, you don't need to guess because you already know. I would like to be talking today about As I Lay Dying by William Faulkner and The Color Purple by Alice Walker. I recently read both of these and enjoyed both of them quite a bit, and their overlap at first was a detriment to As I Lay Dying, but overall I found their own voices, and I kind of had a lot to talk about with these, so let's get started. So let's go alphabetically with As I Lay Dying by William Faulkner. First off, let's do the book haiku. A desolate quest with vindictive obstacles, no peace and no end. So I know this kind of just did the rounds on booktube with Whitney from All the Shelves and Kate Howe talking about this. Let me give you just a brief overview of what this is. This centers around the Bundren family and their quest to deliver their dead mother's body to the graveyard where her people are buried a couple towns away. Through various circumstances, this becomes a far more difficult thing to achieve than originally set out, and along the way we get to intimately know the different family members, know their personal issues, and see how each of them are individually dealing with their grief of the loss of the matriarch of the family, and also we recognize just how incredibly emotionally isolated all of these characters are from one another and from us, the readers. That emotional isolation what originally really put me off when I was reading this. I started reading this and thought I was going to give it two out of five stars because I just didn't care and it was just a really grotesque sort of the world that these people were living in, and I just had nothing to care about and nothing that kept me coming back to story, besides that I was doing this as a buddy read with Adam from Memento Mori and Sarai from Sarai Talks Books. I found that the dialect in here, which varies per different character, but the fact that these are written in dialect snippets, small short little chapters, but also stream of consciousness for the individual characters, most of the time I was not confident that I understood what was going on, and in fact I read along the Sparknotes chapter summaries as I finished uh, reading each chapter in here, just to make sure that I knew what was going on in the bare bones narrative sort of way. But then I got to a halfway point, and one specific chapter from a character character who you'd not heard of before in this narrative, and I really connected with the writing style in that chapter, and it really made me see that Adam and Sarai weren't lying when they said that this is really beautiful writing, I just hadn't seen it really in that light until now. And also in the latter half of the book, I realized how intimately I knew all of these characters, or at least most of them, with such little time and actual words being spent on them. The depth of characterization that Faulkner was able to put across with such a brief and on the surface level, simple sort of narrative was just absolutely amazing. And the more that I got to talk about this with Adam and Sarai, the more I realized that I was analyzing this and picking up on the levels like I had always been encouraged to do in English class, but just never came naturally to me. And it came naturally within this book. So I really loved how this book showed how much of a fun puzzle analyzing a book can be. And that's not something that I've before experienced when analyzing a book or, you know, just reading it closely. I've always just found things like English class and trying to analyze a book to just be a real challenge. So at the end of it, I gave this book four out of five stars. I for sure will read this again. I'm not sure if I'm interested in reading more Faulkner, but I'm really, really glad that Booktube made me buy this and read this. And I'm really glad that reading, that I read it with Adam and Sarai because I don't know if I would have persevered to the midsection if I was reading this on my own, and I also don't know if I would have confronted the fact that I'm actually getting so much out of this, so perhaps I don't 
I d I'm not indifferent to it any longer. Four out of five stars. I highly recommend that you give this a try at some point in your life. It's confusing, but I think that the payoff is really grand. And also, there's absolutely no shame in using Spark Notes, even though you're not in high school anymore. It's one of my favorite things to do nowadays. And now moving on to the color purple. So, book haiku. A world of women wearing the powerful pants. Who are the men now? This was written in the 1980s, but it takes place in the early 1930s for the most part. A huge amount of time spans this novel, so you can't really pinpoint precisely when it is, but it's not far off to say that some of the events in this book were taking place at around the same time that the events in As I Lay Dying was taking place. This too is written in dialect, but in the form of diary entries, or in this case, written down prayers to God more often than not. This book follows the life of Celie, who is a young woman who is abused by her father sexually and eventually is sold into marriage to this other man called Mr. She's separated forcibly from her sister and eventually finds some interesting experiences happening with her when a loose singer woman moves into town named Suge Avery. I read the first few chapters of this in my try a chapter tag Black Lives Matter video and I was already emotionally engaged within those first few pages. I buddy read this with Acacia Ives. I think she was affected by it more than I was because we read it from slightly different perspectives. But just as in As I Lay Dying, this book amazingly characterizes people with such a sparseness of actual words. You get to really understand Celie and the complicated nature of her life and her relationships. You get to learn about the complexities and the awfulness of being a Black woman in the South. Not only how that intersects with the white people in town, but also also just within your own culture and with the other Black people around you. So many trigger warnings in this foul language and rape and sexual abuse. The thing about this and the reason why I could read it because I'm quite sensitive to sexual abuse and rape in books is that though there are graphic scenes, they're very short. So they'll be over in three sentences, absolute maximum. Most of the scenes are just explained in one sentence and then you move on. So you don't, you're not forced to dwell in those horrible moments, unlike the characters were. This also has a really interesting opinion or discussion on the difference between Black African Americans and Africans, Black Africans, and the whole idea that the ancestors of these Black Africans sold some of their brethren to be slaves in America, and that's how these African Americans, you know, happened to grow up in America, and all of the awful things that happened, and somehow needing to reconcile that, and how on the surface you may perhaps look like kin, but in spirit and in personal experience, it's just not that simple. A lot of this book too talks about motherhood and sisterhood and what it means to be a woman. There are a lot of really candid conversations in here that I just thought were done so well and didn't need to be in the book, but just made the book so rich with them being there. For instance, there's one part where Celie has to confront her own sexuality, whereas previously she hasn't had to think about that because otherwise all of her sexual activity has been pretty much against her will. And so now she's having to understand that she too is a sexual being, even though she previously hasn't thought of herself like that. There are also a lot of characters in here who become ambiguous. At first, you you think of them as one thing or another, but then as time moves on and since so much time passes in this book, they start to slightly become other people. And you have to decide 
how you are going to react to this person changing. Are you going to feel the same about them or do you need to look at them in a different light as we need to do in real life too? I was so impressed with this. I nearly couldn't put it down and I just ate it up. There are so many things in here that I could think about more deeply and I look forward to thinking about more deeply whenever I read it again. I highly, highly recommend this. I gave it five out of five stars so far. It's been my favorite foray into black literature which is what I'm working on doing these days. And it's just absolutely worth the hype and absolutely worth your time. So those are my reviews, my teaser reviews on The Color Purple and As I Lay Dying. I really, really enjoy both of these. I think that these are both classics for a reason. And if you have any desire to read them at all, I highly, highly recommend that you get on that sooner rather than later. Thank, thank, thank you for watching. And until next time, continue to be lovely. You're a purple flower. And a quick thanks to my patrons who are supporting me on Patreon. I always enjoy and appreciate your continued support, and I hope you are just having a lovely day.